Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Seth from Zell Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I'm joined by a dear friend of mine, Sharif Adams. Sharif, how are you doing? Great, thanks Zed, always a pleasure to see you. Likewise Sharif. And so this video is a third in a series we are doing uh, with Sharif Adams on the whole aspect of bow turning on a pole lathe. Now in this particular video, what Sharif is going to be demonstrating you is how to sharpen those hook tools that you're using in turning a bolt on a pole lathe. Now, in the first video in this series, we had an in-depth look at the lathe, uh, the wood choice, tool selection, etc., etc. In the second video, we looked at a very detailed tutorial from start to finish on Sharif Adams' personal process for turning a bolt on a pole lathe. Sharif Adams, if you're not aware, has been turning for in excess of 10 years. He's a full-time instructor as well as practitioner himself, uh, a very well respected here in the United Kingdom and across the world. We are currently in his workshop in Dartmoor in the southwest of England. And so with the first two videos in this series, if you haven't watched them already, I would highly recommend you do so by checking out the links below. That will take you to that playlist. Now this video is relatively straightforward, but it's a very important one that we had to do it as a standalone video. Because obviously in the process of turning uh, bowls on a pole lathe, your tools are going to be uh, have to be kept in a sharp condition. I mean, would you say obviously that affects the quality of the bowls you're doing and the kind of work that you're putting Absolutely. out? Absolutely, if your tools aren't sharp, you're gonna be getting a bad finish on the surface of the bowl, simple as that. So, I wanna jump behind the camera and hopefully I look forward to uh, seeing myself, Sharid Adams' personal process for sharpening the bowl lathe hook tools. So Sharif, just before we pursue with the rest of this video, um, I think it's important to stress that this is just your particular technique for sharpening, so you're not necessarily saying this is the only way to do it or you have to do it like this. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Everyone will have slight, Sharpening is one of those subjects. Everyone's got a slightly different way of doing it. Uh, no one is more valid than the other. This is just the way that I've always done it. It's really, really simple. It's, um, yeah, yeah. So before we continue, what are the tools that you're using then to sharpen? So... Right now, I've, I've got this Gransfors axe file, which is essentially a diamond impregnated file with a coarse side and a fine side. Um, I'm only using it because I've been using it when, sometimes when I'm in my workshop to keep my axes sharp, and one day I started using it and realized it worked really well. Previous to that, I was using a little bit of board about the same size with just some wet and dry paper of different grades wrapped around just to keep it sharp, but the same type of idea. I've also used um, DMT files, which are diamond impregnated files, about the same size. You can buy various different, um, you know, coarseness, fine, extra fine, coarse and so on. And I tend to use just the fine or the extra fine ones for sharpening the hook tools because um, they. I, I like to keep them sharp rather than letting them go really blunt and having to do a lot of work on them. Excellent. And you have another DMT stand I have. Well. I also, for that's for, for, so I use that on the back of the tools, the flat one. And on the inside, I'm using one of these um, diamond cones. It's a DMT, like a di uh, cone, diamond impregnated honing cone, essentially. Um, and they, you can get these in all sorts of different grits as well. I think this is an extra fine one. I'm not entirely sure. It probably says it on it somewhere. Um, different colours indicate different levels of fineness. It's either fine or extra fine. I can't remember really, but it seems to do the job nicely. And again, because some of my hook, uh, some of my hook tools are quite tight, sort of small hooks. I find this fine cone is is really really good for the job. Um, again, before I was using these cones, I was just wrapping up a little bit of wet and dry paper into like a tiny little roll, and I would put that inside and just sort of draw it away from the edge and put it back inside, draw it away. Just really, I'm doing most of the work when I'm sharpening or keeping these um, sharp on the back with the files, and I just take off any burr on the inside with the cones. I should also point out that the tools I make have got, um, they're all inside bevel. I don't make any tools with an outside bevel. Um, so they're essentially flat, and the, by the process of curling the tips round, the way that I do that, uh, the, the, the steel creates a natural sort of um, concave on the back. So it's a little bit like having a hollow ground tool, essentially. So it's really easy to sharpen. I can just rest the flat on the back like that, register at the back and the, the, the cutting edge and the back of that um, tool. And I can just polish, polish around the edge like that. And I know that it's registering getting the cutting edge 
And obviously you're being careful to keep away from the uh, uh, cutting edge and, and whatnot. Yep, that's right. I'm just making sure that it's engaging both the... Getting right down to the cutting edge there. But I don't do a huge amount of work, really. I find that as long as you keep it... You know, as soon as you feel it's not biting in the wood, give it a little polish up like that. And I prefer to do it that way, to go around this way, than to go... Um, like that away from the cutting edge because I find that then you can round things over change the the, the, the angle of the edge slightly so by, by going this way registering on the back and the front I find it really really quick and then all I'll do is just when I've done that just put that in there and just run that around and there's that going from the angle of the cutting edge inwards it is yeah it's following the angle just taking off any burr. It's literally, I mean, that's literally all I'll do just to bring the edge back. Very simple. And so once again, if people don't have these particular tools, obviously they can, like you said, use a wet and dry. You can use wet and dry paper, just a, a little bit of board like that, wrap the wet and dry paper around and just polish the back in the same way. And you can use something like 600 grit wet and dry or 1200 grit wet and dry, depending on how, how much of an edge you need to bring back, how blunt the tool is. Um, 1200 is usually fine just to bring the edge back or if it's starting to get a little bit blunt you can do a little bit of work with 600 and then go to 1200. I never feel the need with these hook tools to uh, strop them, to use a strop like an abrasive paste with leather or anything like that. There's no reason why you couldn't but I just don't find it's ever been necessary. These tools aren't quite as delicate or refined as spoon carving knives for example, curved knives, crook knives. Um, they take a lot of um, you know, abuse with big lumps of wood spinning around on the lathe. So um, I've never felt the need to polish them to a, a really razor sharp edge like that. I just don't think it's needed. Yeah. And just lastly, how often would you sharpen? It's, it, the simple answer to that is when you feel that the tool's not biting nicely, when it's not cutting crisply, when it's not taking nice ribbons off, uh, nice shavings. As long if you feel it's scraping, um, that, uh, but bear in mind, of course, that can have something to do with technique you know if the tool isn't offered up to the surface of the wood at the right angle you can start to scrape rather than cut so I, I do wonder sometimes if people when they start turning they think that the tool needs a lot more work actually it's just the angle of presentation that they need, they, that they need to make an adjustment with but if you're getting the angle of presentation correct and uh, you feel that it's not biting crisply it's not taking a nice cut leaving a nice finish cutting nice ribbons then get the sharpening stuff out and give it a little bit of a tickle up and you should find that that sorts it out. So there you go my friends, that is a wrap for this short video where Sharif Adams is showing his technique for sharpening uh, the hook to use for bowl turning on a pole lathe. So Sharif, I really do thank you for showing us it's that. It's an absolute pleasure, Zed, no trouble at all. So a couple of things, number one, I've mentioned a blog post, a very detailed blog post that accompanies this entire bowl turning series from Sharif Adams. Now I'm gonna put a link below to that blog post and within that blog post is not only the information from this entire series, but is also the breakdown of the specific sharpening tools that Sharif uses and then obviously from there you can go venture out and procure those should you want to. So I'll put a link below to that blog post and on there is all the links to all the information that Sharif has just uh, demonstrated in this video. Secondly, as mentioned at the start of this video, this video is the third in a series of the bowl turning series from Sharif Adams. And if you haven't watched that series or you'd like to watch that again, once again, link to that playlist down below and it would mean the world to me for you to check that out. Also, just as a thank you to Sharif uh, for taking the time to, sh uh, to show you his technique on this video, if when you go and check that blog post out, if you could consider joining his newsletter by uh, entering your name and email, and Sharif will update you on everything that, or the myriad of things that he has going on throughout the UK and beyond all year round. And secondly, I'll put a link below to his Instagram profile where you can see up close and personal everything he's getting up to on a regular basis. So all the links for that down below. Sharif, a sincere thank you once again. Hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. So until then, as always, from Sharif and myself, hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. Peace out.